Hello, brave, beautiful warrior soul friends. We are still hoping to do a little book club in the support group for the dissociative identity movement, but since that's not starting right away, um, it's all health dependent for my parts and I. Um, so I wanted to just kind of come on and give you guys an introduction for those of you who have not read her book yet and are hoping to read it with us. So this is from the chapter called Repairing the Past and it's from pages 213 to 215. And it just very neatly, nicely summarizes Janina's approach that she talks about in the whole book. And this is one of three core texts we have so far. Um, we'll probably add more, but three core texts that kind of say what the movement is. And so just kind of having those texts and having um, those therapists and people who have been doing this work for a long time um, being kind of the foundation of the movement is going to really help it be the effective thing that I want it to be. So just going to briefly go over the summary of the multi-conscious parts approach talked about in depth in Janina Fisher's book and hopefully we will still do book club someday when my parts and I are a little bit more up for it. So I'm just going to kind of read through these and summarize and let me know if you have any questions because I know this is a, a, a nice summary. Um, but I basically want people in the movement to have a basic concept under conceptual understanding of what the multi-conscious parts approach is because it's very healing. Like the approach itself is just healing. This book saved my life. That's why I started the dissociative identity movement two years ago. And I think it will really benefit you for being a part of the movement. Um, like when we're talking about Fisher stuff, it's like, what's going on? I don't want that to happen. So just a little summary and let me know if you have any questions. As the client reports emotional distress, negative thoughts, or physical reactions to a trigger, the therapist asks the client to recognize these symptoms as a part. And so you describe there's a part of you feeling overwhelmed. The therapist first helps the client mindfully differentiate traumatized part versus adult observer. And then you try to elicit a felt sense of each part, not an intellectual interpretation. And this is where the Healing Journey Homeschool stuff that I do comes in handy because we talk a lot about subconscious communication. Um, so try to el elicit a felt sense of each part, not an intellectual interpretation. That's the hardest part for me. Notice how she speaks to you through, um, through feelings or words or physical sensations. That's her way of communicating. Let her know you're listening. You want to know what she's trying to tell you. And if you're not sure, just ask her. Next, you place greater um, emphasis on the togetherness of adult and adult, sorry. <laughs> place greater emphasis on the togetherness of adult client and child rather than the content of their conversation. And so it really takes you away from the traditional conscious awareness route of talking about the factual things and brings you to the internal experience of emotional connection with parts. And the point of this is to recover from trauma by building secure internal attachments. It talks about this regardless, like this approach, regardless of diagnosis. If you have OCD, BPD, like anything under the sun, if it has any aspect of trauma, this approach can help. And so this isn't just a DID thing, although it saved me with DID. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, soul friends. Thanks so much for joining. Just briefly summarizing Janina Fisher's multi-conscious parts approach. So place greater emphasis on the togetherness of adult client and child rather than the content of their conversation. Help clients notice the effect of their attention, words, and concern on the part to realize the impact they have when parts experience being seen or mentalized. So it's just that connection, just connection, 100% connection. <clears throat> Hello, soul friends. Welcome, welcome. The next step for the multi-conscious parts approach for trauma recovery is to encourage inner reciprocal communication. Ask her, can she feel you there with her now? Good, she can. That's great. Let her know that we're both listening and we want to understand how upset she is. Make sure inner communication is not a guess or an intellectualized interpretation. Don't try to think about what she would answer. Ask her and then just listen inside. You might hear words, feel an emotion, get an image or memory. He's giving you a picture of his room. Maybe he's trying to say that he's upset about something that happened there. 
The therapist guides the client's normal life self to interpret the child's nonverbal communications and then asks for correction. Did I get that right? I really want to understand. And so the whole point of the therapist in this is to be a moderator between your conscious awareness and your subconscious. A moderator between your normal life adult self and your conscious awareness and your traumatized dissociative parts of consciousness and the subconscious and to facilitate a healing conversation. It's pretty cool, huh? Like, it's really cool. I would love to see a therapist do this. I've never, I've never been able to have a therapist, like, use this approach. And, like, I often daydream and fantasize. And I'm like, that would be so cool. My parts would feel so seen. Like, <laughs> um, so the next step is to cultivate trust. Let her know you understand completely. She wants to trust you, but it's hard. She's been hurt so much. Communicate to her that you know, you really, really know why she'd be afraid to trust you. Because you do, you absolutely know what, what it was like in that home. The therapist needs to capitalize on these moments of emotional recognition and use them to deepen the sense of connection. What's it like for her to sense that you get it? Does she like when you understand, when you believe her? And it's cool because I've been using this approach on myself the past two years, year and a half. And we've actually experienced healing in a level of integration. It's been hard to do it on myself though, but it's, it's been really beautiful. Use the next step, use what does not work as an attachment building moment. So even if it's not totally working the way you plant, it can still be a moment used in the process of building attachments internally. Repairs are even more powerful when they follow from what goes wrong relationally. If everything's just sunshine and daisies in life, you're not growing very strong or very much resilience. But if things are really tough and you show up completely 100% for those tough times, you grow and you build some resilience. And so it's like a process of being there for parts in that way. Um, he's retreating, huh? He's so afraid of being hurt that he's backing away from what he wants most. Let him know that's okay. You understand, right? See what it's like if you reassure him that you won't go away. You'll stay right here and he can take all the time he needs to be sure he can trust you. Feeling the importance of the moment, I speak for the child and guide the adult to an attuned response. I want to help my client gain confidence as a parent in interpreting the child's signals and responding empathetically. It's all about the therapist facilitating a healing conversation between the parent, normal life adult self and the conscious awareness and the child hurting dissociative child parts of consciousness and the subconscious. And then the next step is use the four befriending questions to explore the parts as fears, conflicts, mistrust, hypervigilant shame or anger. And they have that appendix in the back of the book with all the four befriending questions. I highly recommend getting this book. There's a lot of goodies in there. It's Janina Fisher's book published in 2017. Even when therapist feels confident they know the answers already, they need to remember that the purpose of the four questions is to increase dual awareness, deepen the internal dialogue, discover the child's core fear and highlight it, and then teach a model for needs meeting by asking the child to verbalize one concrete in the moment need that could address the core fear. No therapist can turn back the clock and prevent heartbreaking, hor horrifying events from taking place, but we can help clients and their parts to experience how little moments of safety, care, or heartfelt connection in present time can build warm, nourishing, implicit memories side by side with the memories of abandonment and abuse. Build those warm, nourishing, implicit memories side by side with the memories of abandonment and abuse. Each response, the next step, each response by a part becomes another chance for repair, facilitated by the therapist's guidance. The next step is to insist on responsibility and accountability. 
the internal community of parts has often unconsciously recreated the hostile environment of the client's family origin. The normal life self is likely to have neglected the parts allowed hostile or sadistic parts to persecute them or expressed wishes to be normal, to not have parts. When parts say, I don't trust you because you only care about going on without us, or how can I trust you when you've never listened, never even seemed to care what I felt, the therapist much, must encourage the client to connect to that complaint. Do you think there's some truth to what this part is saying? Is he right that you didn't listen, didn't want to care? If so, let him know that. You're the kind of person who can say, I made a mistake and I'm sorry. Tell him. Hello, soul friend, welcome. The next step to using the multi-conscious parts approach for trauma recovery is to use these mistakes and em empathic failures in the service of repair. What's it like for him to have you take responsibility? To hear you say that you realize you have been pushing him away. Yes, you can feel him relaxing just a little bit when you acknowledge the truth. Not many grown-ups ever did that, huh? The next step is to maximize the moments of attunement so they are experienced physically and emotionally, not just mentally. If this little girl were standing in front of you right this minute, what would you want to do? Reach out to her, take her hand, or pick her up and hold her? Feel what that's like to give this little boy in your arms to feel his hand in yours. Is it a good feeling? Take, take in the warmth of his body and the feeling of holding him safely. Ask him if you would feel less scared if you did this every time he got afraid. And the last step here, or no, the next step, almost last. And please do let me know if you have any questions or comments, soul friends. The next step is to avoid the tendency to shift away from mindful connection to a part to habitual insight oriented habitual insight oriented discussion it is the therapist's job to remind clients that there is a child right there listening to every word spoken who needs to know he or she will not be forgotten again as we are talking check in with that little boy and see how he's doing now he needs to feel that he won't be forgotten this time and the only way he'll know is for you to not forget him remember that little children learn what they live you can say that you won't forget him. Now you'll have to live your life without forgetting him. It may be hard, but you can't break a promise to a child. Every safe, caring parent knows that. When these steps are repeated over and over again, the normal life self feels increasingly differentiated from the trauma-driven emotions of the parts and can therefore feel more spontaneously caring and compassionate towards them. The parts in turn increasingly feel held by someone older and wiser. Each, feel, each feels needed and wanted by each other, just as parents and children in a secure attachment relationship feel. Earned secure attachment bestows on the human mind and body the same qualities and resources as secure attachment in childhood. An ability to tolerate closeness and distance, giving and receiving, empathic attunement and empathic failure, the ability to see shades of gray, and the ability to tolerate disappointment. So that just neat, neatly summarizes Janina Fisher's multi-conscious parts approach. It's a foundational piece of the dissociative identity movement. We are hoping to explore the book in a little book club in the support group for the dissociative identity movement. Um, but since that's not starting just yet, I wanted to come share this with you guys. Um, there's a lot of power in this. And if we are trying to recover from trauma by talking about the explicit stuff, the outside stuff, the, the factual things, the things that happened, the, the experiences, the, the details, the specifics, the events, then we are neglecting our parts because they don't speak that language. And when we talk about that stuff, nothing's getting processed and they are re, being re-traumatized. They're being re-traumatized. They're having to relive the trauma and it's not even getting processed. And so when we have dissociation and we're trying to recover from trauma, 
we need to look at alternate routes, especially if what we're doing isn't proving fruitful. Like if you're not receiving some form of relief in your therapy sessions, and it may be not be like every time, you know, some weeks are going to be more intense than others. I get that. But overall, in the scope of, of your progression, if there isn't some form of relief or hope or decreased intensity or, or increased interconnection, then it's time to look at some alternate possibilities. Um, and personally, I did everything under the sun, EMDR, DBT, CBT, every kind of talk therapy, imagine, talk therapy imaginable. I mean, we even did like low energy neurofeedback system and like brain stuff and nothing, nothing helped until this. And now I spend time with my parts every day and I can still be a person. <laughs> like I didn't feel like a person before this, to be quite frank. So just a lot of magic in that um, and a lot of beauty. And I'm actually going to be meeting Janina Fisher. I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity. I'm going to be meeting her in less than two weeks. So super exciting. So kind of just going over all the, all the stuff I've learned from her. So I will share this. Feel free to watch the playback. It is a nice little summary of the multi-conscious parts approach for trauma recovery. It's a focus on excuse me, working with your adult normal life self and your conscious awareness in order to unblend and help heal and be present for all of the dissociative trauma related child parts and other parts of consciousness within the subconscious. Um, and it is just really, really powerful. Um, I can tangibly feel healing every single day I use it. And I can definitely not say that for any of the other stuff I was using. Um, and so if there's an approach that you can feel healing every single time, like that's what I want to be the standard. My therapist, now we know why EMDR wasn't super helpful for you. Yup, yup, I had to learn that too. I did it in 2012 and 2016. And it's funny because there are different parts running. So it was like semi helpful in 2012 and like not at all. It like way backfired in 2016. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> so yeah, we, we are learning. We are all learning together. And this is all new information for, um, yeah, new information. <laughs> anyway, I am going to skedaddle. I just wanted to share that. Um, if you just join, feel free to peek that playback. Um, it is important from my perspective to have um, just kind of a basic generalized knowledge of what the multi-conscious parts approach is. And we will hopefully be diving deeper into this book and the support group. So check out that group and stay tuned for posts. I love you all. Have a beautiful and blessed day. I'm so excited to change the world with you warriors. <laughs> See you next time.